Hello, Podnutians. Welcome to Android App Addicts, episode 485. This is Door to Door Geek. Mark might be jumping in mid show, so be prepared. Uh, first thing I got to mention is I have to a have to apologize for episode 484. It was only me on the show, thus uh, there the editing was slightly different, but I went and changed my workflow. Worst thing you can do when you do these kind of repetitive tasks on a computer is to change your workflow, and I did. And I didn't realize truncate silence on a non-wave file caused what it caused. And if you were one of the early downloaders, you heard a very confusing podcast that was very hard to keep up with because it seemed like every eight seconds or so, it deleted a full second of audio. So words would be just disappeared out of it. I did re-edit the show, re-upload it. Took me about 24 hours to do so before I realized what was going on, which also tells me people on the Patreon feed, because there's an exclusive RSS feed to the Patreon members, they get the audio three days before anybody else. And if they did listen to it, they did not uh, say anything to me or uh, mention it. So I didn't know about it until the show actually went live, live, and I downloaded and listened. And hey, hey, Chuck's in the YouTube chat. Good to see you, Chuck. And yes, IRC is better just because it's more stable and and it works pre-show and post-show. So that's always a plus. Um, so I want to apologize for making that mistake. Assure you it is fixed. If you want to refresh your RSS feed or on some uh, podcast players, you have to actually uh, right-click or activate the individual episode and say refresh contents from RSS feed or something like that. Then you'll get the new file. It will actually say in the title, fixed audio, go ahead and re-download it and listen, and it should sound a whole lot better. Um, first app I'm going to bring up here is uh, an app I saw, I questioned its usefulness, uh, authenticity, stability in all kinds of manner of things. Because if you remember, the next fit Robin had a capability uh, where it would like hibernate uh, applications and remove them from your device, saving space. And then when you wanted them back again, install it. Well, it turns out what it looks like they were doing was only backing up the URL of the APK. So if the app got updated after you hibernated it, you would get a newer version when you un un hibernated it. Or if the app went off the play store, you couldn't download it again. That's what I'm led to believe the uh, next bit Robin did. I never had one. Um, so that definitely took some of the polish off of that application. This app does something different. I'm not completely sure of what this app does. I will tell you that, even though I've been playing with it for four or five days, but, but it's called never uninstall apps dash space up by stash co. Marked as a lifestyle app, 3,256 reviews, marked E for everyone, completely free to download, no in-app ads and no in-app purchases. Uh, 4.3 average reviews, updated April 3rd, 2017, between 50,000 and 100,000 installs. Current version 1.12. Okay, here is one of the examples of what this app does, okay? Uh, it can take an app that hypothetically, the app I'm going to use is T-Mobile Tuesdays. Logically, I only need that app once out of a week on Tuesday. So why should I have it on my phone, taking up space, taking up resources, maybe being ran in the background when I don't actually need it? And I really don't want to go through the hassle every week of uninstalling the app and reinstalling the app and then re-authenticating my phone number and jumping through all those hoops for crappy coupons that I really don't use anymore because I think they really went downhill, but that's just me. So what this app does, it looks like you open up the app. There's actually two different applications in the app drawer for this app, which I found a little bit weird to start with. One is called one tap compress and the other one is just labeled, uh, space up. Um, go ahead launch the app, what it will do is basically scan your phone, suggest for apps that are rarely 
used or taking up a lot of space that you can compress. Now, one of the things now, after you run it uh, on my device, when I turn my screen off, it gets killed. So then it doesn't work after I turn my screen off. But what it does after running the app is it inserts a wedge into the uninstall process. This is one nicety of the app. So if you go to un uninstall an app, it will ask you, do you want to um, uninstall the app or would you like to instead just uh, um, come compress the app? Um, which I like, to be honest. I like the fact that it intercepts that process and asks you if you want to do that. Um, after it does that, what it looks like it does is it takes the actual APK and all of the files from the installed folder. Because what it looks like is when you install an Android app, it creates a, a unique folder based upon the URL of the Google Play Store and puts everything in that folder that it needs. Looks like it compresses that entire folder, puts a stub application in its place. And the stub application in its place is really a fake application with a grayed out icon that when you want to bring the application back, you click that, the same app runs, and then it uncompresses the app and puts it back. One of the warnings is it does say that it can sometimes not back up the user data of the app. So if you have saved passwords, saved settings, some of the apps will not back up that information correctly. Some will. Um, I will say I really love the idea of this app. Uh, one flaw that I had with it is if the app is being hi hibernated and then there's an update to that app, it, you will, you'll, you'll have problems. It will try to run the update against the app. The update will fail. Then if you go to restore the app, the app essentially disappears from your device is what it looks like. So if the, there is an update to an app that you know you have hibernated, go unhibernate the app, then do the update. That's the only warning I give people. Now, the only other complaint I have about the app is, and this is a real weird complaint, I'm going to say, the interface to the app is almost scummy because it looks very smooth, very animated, almost like a fake application running on your phone kind of thing. Uh, it does do full screen takeover on your phone when it does the hibernation process because what it looks like is, is actually doing an uninstall of the app and then installing its own stub app in the background. On mine, I can see behind the home back and menu buttons, I can see the screen doing things behind that app. In general, I like this app. It's not for every user. It's not for the first time user. It's for the uh, guy who really knows the device, really knows how to use the device and can see the issues coming. Like if you have the app hibernated and an update comes that you unhibernate it. I do not allow automatic updates on my phone, but at the same token, I check at least 50 times a day to see if there's updates because I'm a little bit, you know, OCD. But I do like this app. I do like how it works. Uh, I really appreciate the fact being able to, to hibernate apps when I know I'm not going to use them. And most importantly, if you hypothetically have Facebook Messenger installed, as my example also, where you only want the app to be running when you get that once every week, once every three weeks message from somebody, and you get an email with it as well. So I hibernate that app, and when somebody who I care to answer to sends me a message on Facebook, I then unhibernate the app and, and then I uh, answer them. So in general, I like this app. I will say if you're uh, not a more advanced user, you might have problems using this. But if you are advanced, check it out. It's called Never Uninstall Apps Dash Space Up. And Space Up is all one word. Uh, I really do like it. Uh, next app I'm going to bring is actually a uh, share from a uh, guy who's usually in the chat, and I do not see him in the chat this week, uh, Josh. Uh, it, it's called My App Share. Uh, in the past, I've used App Dragon, and I still use App Dragon for now, but I do have this app installed, so I'm going to give it a try. It is called My App Sharer, all one word by Jones Chi. It's a tools app. E for everyone does have in-app ads and does have in-app purchases. 
completely free to download 136,000 reviews, 4.3 average reviews, uh, updated September 30th, 2016 installs between 10 million and 50 million. Oh my, that is quite a lot. Um, what this app allows you to do is instead of just sharing URLs to applications, cause that's really what app dragon does. It takes the title of the app and the URL of the app or apps. You, you can select more than one and then shares it, saves it. This app also allows you to actually share the physical APK file and will allow you to also beam, uh, beam via, um, NFC to, uh, to other devices. Um, I like the idea of this app. Uh, I don't know how useful it is if you're the only one using it, unless you like sharing a APKs, like from your phone to your tablet or from one of your phones to a, to a different, uh, family member's phone. Uh, it also has built in add to Dropbox and air droid support. Uh, also Google drive. So I like having those functionalities built right in. I will say I have not backed up, uh, my Android OS now in probably two and a half, three years. I do no backups. I do no restores. I just export a list of the, uh, installed apps. And then when I reinstall my device, I import that as a text file, click the ones I want to install, let it install from Google play and move on. And the official Google restore function has gotten a hell of a lot better. So why with that said, this app still serves a function. I want to thank Josh for the share again. It's called my app sharer. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. Um, next let's go over a email. This email is from Joseph with the subject app feedback. Uh, thank you guys for an excellent show. The real AAA. Here's how, you know, this is me talking outdoor. Here's how, you know, this is a guy that actually listens to the show and actually is sending in an email. And it's not some form email from some SEO scum company that he hired to try to contact everybody publicizing Android related stuff. So thank you very much, Joseph. Um, Thank you guys for an excellent show. The real AAA. Oh, and, and oh, 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 one more thing for me. The first AAA. We literally came out with Android um, App Addicts AAA. I want to say nine days before Twit announced the name of their show all about Android. So it was a really good idea to name it AAA. So good. Twit did the same thing. Uh, he goes on to say, I've been listening for a while and I'm a big fan. I'm a developer by trade and only dabble in the Android app de de development. I was wondering if you would offer me some feedback on my latest app. I'm not asking you to re view it. Um, although you are welcome to do so, I'm more interested in whether you think it is something useful. I especially want to see if it saves Mark some time in his spreadsheet. This is proof the guy listens. I mean, that is unbelievable for proof right there. He actually listens. He knows about Mark's addiction to documenting everything, making a spreadsheet to figure out the pros and the cons and the risk and the reward of everything he basically does in his life. Um, he goes on to say, this is an open source app that I'm charging $1.99 uh, cent for on the Play Store. The app is named What's left all one word w h a t s l e f t and it will be the only one that comes up for you if you leave the space out of the name you can find the source code on github as well i can also send you a link to the apk file if you don't want to pay the buck 99 to test the app thanks for the great show and for your consideration batter it at at 87 percent okay one he knows where the real aa two he knows Mark's addiction to spreadsheets. Three, he tells us his battery life. Joseph, I love you. If you live close, I'll buy you a beer. Okay. Uh, like hell, you're going to send me the APK. I'm buying the thing. Okay. You put blood, sweat, and tears into it. I'm downloading it. And I did download it. I haven't had a lot of time to play with it, but I did download it. I like the idea of the app is what I'm going to say. Um, 
Let me go to the Play Store and pull it up real quick. Uh, and I will say the only caveat is because of the current situation, AKA, you know, modern times, uh, when my first instinct, when I thought what's left, I thought, is this going to be some kind of political app that's going to tell you if something that you're, if like, is your opinion to the left or right? I mean, that's the only, that's to be honest, what came to my head. I don't know if that's what everyone else thinks, but that's what I thought. Um, Okay, uh, let me change the camera. So we're actually looking at the app for everyone else. A, a really good logo too. Great logo. It's basically a cup of cup of coffee uh, with a two tone background. Um, it's a finance app, so that's a good key. It's in the finance category, marked E for everyone. One dollar ninety nine cents to buy. No in app ads and no in app purchases. Thank you very much. Uh, go down. And I'll say first presentation. You have pretty good uh, screenshots, pretty clear screenshots where you enter the very first screenshot. Input the current balance from your bank. Example here. Go on. Enter a enter a um, transaction. Uh, review transactions to where you can clear them out. You can edit them. You can mark them as cleared. Mark them as uncleared so you can see what is pending and what is not pending. And then tells you what's left in your bank account. So. With it, all it took was the screenshots for me to completely understand. I was completely wrong with the original idea of this app and it's actually a finance tracking app. So that to me is a very good uh, niche to take in. His description is what's left is a free Libra app for anti-budgeting. Ooh, that might be a good buzzword there. I like that anti-budgeting figure out what's left in your, a, in your a account based on, uncleared transactions license gpl v3 again thank you very much for your contribution to open source um uh coffee cup artwork is licensed uh cc by creative commons licenses again good man um you can get the source code here budgeting i recommend that you create a budget but this app is helpful at times when you need to decide if you have enough money for a important in investment or maybe you didn't stick the, to the budget that well pretty good pretty good documentation very good description i will say uh it is eligible for the family library so again i will thank you uh current version 1.3 installs between one and five i'm very happy to say i'm one of those five uh so i'm going to play with this and honestly i'm not going to lie whatsoever joseph your timing sending me this email is quite appropriate I need to do a better job of monitoring, maintaining, and being a completely aware of everything that's in the Podnuts bank account. I am the owner. I am the president, which also means I'm responsible and I need to be more responsible. So I'm going to use this app to track all of the uh, Podnuts uh, income outcome kind of thing, see what's going on, see what's left, see what I can afford. Uh, so a, thank you very much. I want to also encourage everyone go to the notes. If you're in your Android or iOS client, just go ahead and click on the album art should take you right to the notes. Scroll down a little bit. This is the first app mentioned, sorry, second app mentioned. So it's going to be right by the bottom of the notes. They're in reverse chronological order. Don't ask why it's dumb. I know, but that's what it is. And click on what's left. If you have enough money in your Google opinion rewards, Go ahead and click buy. If you do not, and you're a long time listener to the show, ping me. I'll send you the two bucks via PayPal. Buy the damn app, support him. He's supporting us and give him feedback. Most importantly, let him know what he's doing right. Let him know what he's doing wrong. Both of them are very important to project development and application development. So support those who support you. Uh, again, thank you very much, Joseph. Uh, I will play with this app. I'm going to also uh, make sure Eric and Mark got your email because you sent it through a normal Podnuts contact and I forgot to send them uh, the link until too late. And Mark just said, it doesn't look like I'm going to make it, but he's going to have a really cool story to tell next week. Thank you, Mark. I love you. Uh, and I hope everything's okay. Um, what's left? Go check it out. Buck 99 the store. Very cool app. Now I got to make sure that I don't skip documenting this show.
on pen, we do our own notes. Okay. Next app is another app that I am going to have to find the uh, income, if you will, to check out. Uh, only because they right there on the very front say they have a Linux client. I'm a Linux weenie. Hello, my name is Dorothy Thor Geek. That's what I do. Uh, this app is called Desk Doc Pro by Florian Woo, Drassenbacher. Oh man, tools 216 downloads, E for everyone, no ads, no in app purchase. $5.49. Stopping right there. I don't mind spending a dollar or two bucks for nearly anything. Once I see something broach four, five, seven dollars, I start to get a little, uh, have a little reservation about what I'm going to buy. Then I looked at the video of this app and I looked at the screenshots of this app and I read the description of this app and it seems like something I think I really would like to play with. Um, again, it's called desk doc pro uh essentially if you've ever used uh synergy or you've ever used uh input director or you've ever used um one of those virtual kvms i believe is the category of, of applications what this enables you to do is to have two devices one of them being a computer and one of them being an android device you install the software on both ends on the Android side and on your desktop operating side. And then what it allows you to do is use one keyboard and mouse and be able to control both devices. Now on Synergy, what you do is you basically configure it to say, my main screen is here. My secondary screen is to the left of my screen. So how you sometimes have multi-monitor mode same kind of thing, except when you take your mouse off of that screen, your mouse then appears on the Android device. I love, love, love the idea of this. And it has Windows, Mac, and yes, a Linux client. That alone is making me want to give the guy the 550. He went out of his way. He supports Linux. The question's going to be, how good does he support Linux? Literally between you and me, I right now, after this show, have five shows to post produce. Mini PC show, Linux for the rest of us, Android App Addicts, MRP, Podnuts Pro. And I got to get them all done as soon as possible. So it doesn't leave a lot of time to play with applications. And I need to play with this with a genuine desktop or laptop in use. And most of the time I'm on a desktop or laptop is when I'm podcasting or when I'm doing post production. So I need to um, do that. So next time I was sitting down and, and I don't have a small hill of things to do, I'm going to install this on my uh, desktop, laptop, and install this on my device. Looks like you do need JRE 1.7 or newer. I hate Java. I hate Java. I hate Java. I really hate Java, but I'm going to install it because if this app does what it's supposed to do, uh, I'm totally on board. Uh, it looks like uh, it even tells you what the... Uh, keyboard shortcuts are for multi-touch control and move the mouse, turn off the screen control and mouse exit. So calling down control and I think drag the mouse off of the Android device volume con uh, hold down control and scroll. That's smart. Brightness control and alt and mouse mouse scroll. That That is very smart as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and it does tell you right mouse button is your back button. Mouse wheel button, like you push down your mouse wheel is the home button. Right mouse long press is your menu button. Mouse wheel button long press is your recent apps. So I love the fact that in the app, it tells you what all these shortcuts are. Uh, hopefully they're easy to access while you're in the application itself. A uh, really smart app, uh, technically way overdue. I've seen other apps try to try to do this. I rarely see Linux support. I'm not going to lie. I rarely, rarely see actual support in Linux. So I'm going to give this a shot, see how it goes. Uh, it has 4.6 average rating in the store. Updated June 20th, 2017, between 1,000 and 5,000 installs. Current version 1.1.3 Pro. Um, very cool. Again, it's called Desk Doc Pro by Florian Drossenbacher. Drossbacher. 
I don't even know if Florian is a male or female name that shows you how ignorant I am. I'm going to guess male. Why? Because I don't know. And that's what I'm sticking with. It's a male name. Um, I'm going to bring up this app just one more time, just as a reminder to everyone. Uh, if you didn't listen to last week's show, there's an application that you can do that can help make a difference in some people's lives, some people who are vision impaired lives. Uh, it's called Be My Eyes. Long story short, long story last podcast, short story this podcast. Install the app, let it uh, run in the background. When someone with a vision in vision impairment needs assistance on either identifying something or just help with seeing something because they're blind, they can call a, a, a person through this app. It gets sent to a, basically a random person. You might be that one. You answer the call. You can look through their camera. You can tell them what you're seeing. You can help somebody immediately. You don't have to wait. You don't have to do anything special. All you got to do is look at your screen and tell the people what you see. Very simple way to do the right thing for humanity. And I will say, Door to Door Geek and Podnuts' first goal outside podcasting is for the betterment of humanity, period. That's what I think humans should strive for. And that's what I try to do, just help humanity when possible. Um, okay. We're going to jump to another app and wow, I'm doing a lot of apps this week. Um, this app is actually a repeat. I'm not going to lie. I'm dragging this one down from the attic, but there's a reason for it because I'm genuinely shocked at the reason I'm bringing this up. Okay. Folding at home by Sony mobile communications. Okay. Folding at home. We should all know what that is. You, you, give your processor cycles. This was a big thing on laptops and desktops and servers for the longest time. You give away your spare processor cycles to the greater good. And what your computer is doing, it's given a certain set of routines. These routines equate to the folding of proteins. When you fold proteins, a great many different things happen. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. It's hard to tell. And the number of folds you can do on a protein, a single protein can literally be astronomical. Okay. So to expect one computer or one supercomputer to be able to look at every protein and say what's going to happen with, with everything is very unreasonable. So people volunteer their CPU cycles to do this. And it's available on Android. Now, if you have a spare Android device and you don't mind using power, plug it up, leave it plugged up, run folding at home, help the greater good figure out what can happen when these proteins fold. Sometimes they can cause cancerous type effects. Sometimes they can cause good effects. We only know after that we um, try this. Um, here's the reason I'm bringing it up. Okay. Folding at home with the at symbol, Sony mobile communications, E for everyone, completely free to download, no ads, no in-app purchase, 7,332 reviews, 4.4 average reviews updated March 22nd, 2017 between 100,000 and 500,000 installs, current version 1.00.61. Here's the real reason I'm bringing it up. This is Sony. Okay. And the application and the complete back end of this application is available to download on GitHub. They completely open sourced this entire application. Hats off, Sony, you did something right for once in your stinking hundred plus years of existence or however long you've existed, you've done something right. When companies do the right thing, we have to let them know they're doing the right thing. So if you have a spare Android device, or you want to give up some of your uh, CPU cycles to let them know they did the right thing, go ahead, open up your Google Play, search for folding at symbol home, folding at home, download, download this app, let it run for a little bit, and let them know, thank you for open sourcing your code. There's no doubt now this code that has been released is going to help some other developer in some other way. The number one rule about programming, application creation, code creation is you cannot create everything unless you are truly gifted at what you do. Truly one in a million developer. You cannot create everything that you do. You have to stand on the shoulders of giants, stand on the shoulders of people before you 
copy code from people from before you. And most of the time after you copy it, you then have the ability to make it better. And then you share that code back and the cycle of code life starts all over again. So go ahead and check it out. Folding at home, Sony Mo mobile hub communications, a uh, pretty cool app. Uh, here's another app. I had the ability to check out last night. Finally, again, um, it is called remote Android TV by innovation lab. It's a tools application E for everyone completely free to download, no ads in the app and no in-app purchase, 1,560 reviews, 3.4 average reviews, updated June 6, 2017, between 100,000 and 500,000 installs, current version 1.8.5.4. Long story short, I watch Star Trek Continues. I love Star Trek Continues. It's fan diddly tastic is what I'm going to say. And yes, I said diddly. Um, I love that last night, literally they came out the brand new episode. So I had a reason to go up into my living room, turn on, uh, my TV, switch it to, uh, HDMI two, I believe it's two, and then fire up my Android TV on my rock 64 board. And I forgot when I go into the Cody interface, the back on the Android, the Google remote doesn't work correctly at all. And I can't figure out how on that remote to go back at actually. So I downloaded this third party remote. Here's the only hook. If I just launch this app, it will not see the Android device and connect. If I load the other Android remote, the Google one, let it connect, then hit home button, then launch this app, it connects. So it's like uh, loading the Google one wakes up the Android TV and allows this one to connect. This one did work better. Still couldn't get the damn voice button to work right. But I'm guessing that's me or my Android device that isn't letting me do it. The version of the Android uh, device. Uh, this is a slightly expanded feature set of buttons, including a dedicated home button, dedicated power button, uh, dedicated volume up and down buttons. Frankly, this is a better remote. That's all I got to say a much better remote. There's also a applications tab to where it will connect to the device, scan the installed apps and allow you quickly to jump to the installed apps on your phone and jump and launch right into an app without having to go through the menu and hit up and down and go back and forth. So I, I, I'm sorry, Google, look at this app by Innovation Lab called Remote Android TV. Look at what it does. Say, hey, guys, you're a small shop. There's only X number of you. How about we buy you and you work on the Android remote we have because they, that's what they need to do because their app sucks. Google, your app sucks. Google, your app sucks. Google, yes, yeah, me. Your app is bad. This is much better. And uh, I had no problem whatsoever. It also has features like a touchpad support. So if you want to uh, use your phone like a touchpad, touch and move around. There will be a mouse on your TV that you can go around and control and tap and move. Uh, I didn't know of a single feature this did not have. I'll say that. Worked really good. Uh, I honestly wish there was an in-app purchase because I'd buy it because the app worked that damn good is what I'm going to say. Um, I'm going to bring one more app here. Uh, and this, I will say, oh, it's a slightly weird app because I never thought this was going to be an app and I never thought I would bring it because I'm already connected and have been connected throughout the years to so many different apps that tell you, because if you remember, we used to have the um, Amazon free app of the day. Many apps then saw the popularity of that, picked up on it and tried to do their own thing. We've had countless and countless and countless apps where you can download them, install them, and it would monitor apps that are on sale, apps that went free, apps that, you know, the uh, price is new and price changes and all kinds of things. Um, but this one, I'm sorry, there's a touch of credibility in my personal bias opinion about this app. It's called Paid Apps Gone Free dash P A G F, Paid Apps Gone Free. Uh, by Cheeky Softworks. 
great name. Uh, e for everyone, completely free, no in-app ads, no in-app purchases, 1,927 reviews, 4.4 average reviews, updated October 10th, 2017, between 100,000 500,000 installs, current version 1.2.3. Uh, this, what it looks like it does nothing more. And I'll say, and I have no problem saying that. It does nothing more than scrapes Ubuntu vibes. And I've seen before in the past, Ubuntu vibes has been doing this for a long time where they have a page dedicated on their site for paid apps gone free. So all this developer is doing is basically scraping like an RSS feed for these pages and allowing you to see previous days and todays. And if you let it, it will notify you every day when the new posting goes up. I like that. Okay. Being an Android app show guy, here's a good way to keep up to date on all kinds of apps. So you just basically get the notification, you click it in a, you know, two to three minutes, you scroll through it. If you see one you like, you tap it, it goes right to the play store. No messing around, no ridiculous things going on. You click it, it goes right to the app. You can then download it, do whatever you want to do. Here's the only gripe because to truly like something you have to be able to complain about it as well. And I love my wife. Um, I digress. Um, the only thing I wish you could do in this app is I wish you could say never in the existence of paid app gone free or me with a heartbeat in my chest, show me an icon pack ever again. I really could care less about an icon pack of any size, of any scope, of any theme, of any shape, of any developer, for any launcher, with any concept or idea. I don't care. I'll never care. I never will care. I never can think I ever would care. So if, if, if you want me to pay for this app, uh, Cheeky Softworks, put in the ability to not see icon apps, I'll happily give you two bucks. And there's no doubt that's easy. A simple grep that if this title contains icon, don't show it. And once in a while, if you have a false positive, that's okay. I'll forgive you because you're not forcing me to see three to five to sometimes eight icon pack apps every day. Rant over. Okay. A good app. Download it. Check it out. Easy way to keep up to date on all kinds of uh, new app stuff going on. That's all the apps I'm going to bring. Let me do a quick app rundown because, yes, I'm that damn good. Never uninstall apps dash space up by stash co. My app sharer, all one word, by Jones Chi. What's left by Jay Van Pelt. Finance uh, doc. Um, I'm sorry. Desk Doc Pro by Florian Droschenbacher. Um, Be My Eyes dash Helping the Blind by Be My Eyes. Holding at Home by Sony Mobile Communications. Remote Android TV by Innovation Lab. Paid apps gone free dash PAGF by Cheeky Software. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight apps for one guy sitting here in my basement while my kid comes down. And shows me the little heart shape and then does the little Richard Dawkins, I, I love you sign because he's going to bed. I have a really good night and I hope you guys have a really good time. Uh, please don't forget support those who support you or AKA Mark would say pay for what you like. Uh, if you do want to do that, you can go to patreon.com slash Android app addicts, or you can write to podnos.com, click on the donate button that goes to PayPal. If you really want to support Mark, go to element OP the word element, and then the word O-P-I-E, O-P. Uh, go download his stuff, show him some love, show him that you uh, would like to support him as well. Never forget, easiest way to contact us, AAA at podnuts.com. Second easiest way to contact us, 707-6-PODNUT. That is 707-6-PODNUT. You can send us a voicemail like that, no problem. We'll hook up, we'll listen to you, we'll talk about it. Uh, and I will say, thank everyone for downloading. Thank everyone for sharing. If you can take this link and reshare it on Twitter, reshare it on Facebook, reshare it on Instagram, reshare it on any of those places where you guys hang out, that is maybe the most important thing you can do to support this network is get more people listening. 
little doubt in my mind. Uh, the only way we can go in our numbers is up, and that's not because they're bad, but because I do believe we make that good of a product. I want to thank everyone, and we will talk to everyone again in about a week.